Avware user accounts are used by Avware software products to identify and validate user credentials through a web-based management tool. By utilizing these accounts, system administrators can control the specific resources, features, and software products that are available to each individual in the organization. This tutorial will focus on the creation and maintenance of individual user accounts. These accounts are used to identify users of the various Avware software products and manage the resources they have access to. Avware user accounts are created and maintained through the Avware web portal. This is accessible via the Avware website by clicking on Customer Login. When prompted for a login, you may use an Avware user account, or if none has been set up as yet, use the master company login that was assigned to you when you first received your Avware software. After providing your login credentials, you will be taken directly to the Avware web portal. This provides access to details relating to your account, such as user key assignments and subscriptions, as well as several online resources, such as product and catalog downloads. Selecting user accounts from the sidebar takes you to the page where you are able to review, add, or edit user accounts associated with your company. At first, the list will be empty as it appears here. To create your first user account, click on add user in the toolbar. From here, the process is relatively straightforward. Enter the first name of the user in the field provided. The location field allows users and companies with multiple workplaces to be grouped based on their physical location. This field could also be used to identify a department or other such work group. The user type is a very important field that determines what level of access the user should receive in terms of program features and resources. We'll discuss user types and how to set them up later in this video. For the time being, simply be aware that by default, there are three different levels of users pre-established. Administrators essentially have access to everything. They are the super users that have unrestricted access to all aspects of the software and the web portal. Be mindful when granting administrator level access to users as they will have the ability to maintain user accounts in addition to other software options. Power users are typically your senior or expert users. While they do have the ability to access virtually all online resources and features, they will be restricted from managing user accounts or software settings that affect the entire company. Finally, standard user is the designation that the majority of users would generally be given. These users have access to commonly used items such as catalogs and shared resources, but will be restricted from such things as product updates. Once again, the rights and restrictions given to each user level can be reviewed and at additional levels, each with their own permissions can be set up as required. This will be explained in detail later in this video. With the basic user information entered, the final step is to indicate the email account that will be associated with this user. Any valid email account can be used but it must be unique to this user as their email address will be used to log into both the Avware web portal and any Avware software application. With this complete, simply click Save to complete the setup. Please note, if the email address provided has previously been assigned or is not valid, you will be notified and will have to provide an alternate. When a user account is first created, the email associated with it must be validated before the account can be used. This is indicated by the pending account status. This means that while the account has been created, it cannot be used until it is validated. The Avware web server automatically generates a validation email and sends it to the specified address. When the user receives the validation request, they need only click on the link provided to confirm that they are the owner of the email address. Clicking on the link will take them directly to a dialog in which they can select a password for their account and complete the validation. Once they do, their account status will change to active, indicating that the account is available for use. On occasion, users may miss their validation emails. Perhaps it was trapped by their spam filter, or they deleted it before they could respond to it. In such events, the administrator can resend the validation email as often as is necessary simply by selecting the pending account and clicking on Send Email. The email address associated with the user account must be validated before it becomes active. This is to ensure that the email provided actually belongs to the user in question. Making changes to a user account is just as straightforward. Simply select the account to be edited and click on Edit User. Please note that if a user account is used to log into the web portal, that account will be unavailable for selection. This is by design and intended to prevent any user from modifying their own account settings. Logging into the web portal using the assigned company master password will provide access to all user accounts. From the edit screen, any of the user settings can be changed the only exception being the email address. Since the email address was used to validate the account and is unique to that user, 
changing it would require the account to be revalidated. In order to change it, simply click on Change Email Address and enter the new one. To save changes, click on Save or click on Cancel to abandon the changes and leave the account as it was. If the email address has been changed, the account status will switch back to pending and a validation email will be sent out to the user just as before. Should a user happen to forget their password, there are two ways in which it can be reset. For security purposes, there is no way to actually view a user's password, but it can be reset, giving them the opportunity to select a new one. The first means to accomplish this is initiated by a system administrator. From the user account list, select the account in question and click on Reset Password in the toolbar. This will essentially take the user through the process of revalidating their account and selecting a password, just as they did when it was first set up. The user will receive a validation email as before, complete with a link allowing them to select a new password. The second can be initiated by the user themselves from the Avware website. When attempting to log into the customer portal, there is a link labeled Forgot Password. Providing that they have entered a valid email address that is associated with an Avware account, they will be offered the opportunity to send a confirmation email that will allow them to reset their account password. Unlike the previous option, requesting a password reset email will not disable their account or place it in a pending state. If they do happen to remember their password prior to resetting it, they can simply continue to use their account as before. It may occasionally become necessary to temporarily disable a user account. The user may have gone on extended leave or you simply wish to temporarily suspend their access to the software. Select the account in question and click on Disable User in the toolbar. The disabled status of the account will be reflected in the user status. If a user with a disabled account attempts to log into the software or the web portal, they will be unable to do so and advise of the status of their account. To re-enable a user account, simply select as before and click on Enable User. Their account status will be returned to an active state and their account will be available for use once again. Deleting an account entirely is equally straightforward. Select the account that you wish to delete and click on Delete User in the toolbar. You may have noticed that when selecting user accounts to edit, disable, or delete that the system allows more than one account to be selected at a time. This multi-select functionality was designed to allow administrators to effect changes to several accounts at one time, instead of having to repeat each operation for every user one at a time. If, for example, you wish to resend validation emails to all the pending users, you need only select those user accounts and click on Send Emails. This will cause validation emails to be sent to all the selected users. When multiple accounts are selected, the toolbar at the top of the window offers only the functionalities that are applicable to all the users. For example, if multiple active users are selected, the toolbar offers the ability to disable all the users in a single operation. Similarly, if multiple inactive users are selected, an option to enable all users is offered. If, however, both active and inactive users are selected together, no tool button is provided. This is because neither the enabled user or disabled users option would be applicable to all those selected. The same logic applies to all the tool buttons in the toolbar. If multiple active users are selected, an option to reset passwords is provided. However, the moment a disabled account is selected as well, that option disappears as it is not applicable to disabled accounts. Earlier in this video, we discussed the different user types that can be assigned to users in order to determine which software features and resources they will have access to. These user levels can also be maintained through the web portal in the tab entitled User Types. The three user types discussed previously, Administrator, Power User, and Standard User are established by default. As they are predefined standards, they cannot be modified. However, additional user types can be created as required provide access to additional combinations of features. While the standard user types cannot be modified, their specific permission sets can be viewed. To do so, simply select a user type and click on View User Type from the toolbar. For each user type, a list of software features and resources is displayed with a yes or no switch next to it, indicating whether users of this type should have access to it. To create a new user type, simply click on Add User Type on the toolbar. 
The new user type can be assigned any name, as long as it has not been previously used. The various permission settings can then be set as desired to establish the level of access users of this type will be given. The copy from field provides a shortcut allowing new user types to be established based on the settings of others. If, for example, one wanted to create a variation of the standard power user type, they could select power user in the copy from field. This would instantly copy the permission settings from that type to the new one being created, avoiding the need to manually replicate each one. Once copied, they can be modified as desired for the new type. Click on Save to save the new user type or cancel to exit without saving. Editing the permission setting for any given user type is just as straightforward. Simply click on the user type to be modified and click on Edit User Type in the toolbar and modify settings as desired. As before, click on Save to save the new user type or cancel to abandon the changes and exit. Once custom user types have been established, they will appear in the user type pulldown whenever user accounts are added or modified.